Hello and welcome to Wisdom Blog. In this series of uh, Terraform uh, training session, we'll be looking at uh, provisioning virtual machines on uh, VMware vCenter using uh, Terraform. And in this video, we'll be declaring the variables separately. In our previous video, we have shown like uh, a basic uh, uh, basic code to provision a virtual machine on vCenter using Terraform. But uh, in this video, we'll also create a virtual machine uh, declaring the variables and also we'll be using uh, the Terraform customization for OS customization for uh, for our virtual machine where uh, uh, like uh, we'll be adding the VM to the domain. So basic requirements uh, we already discussed uh, like uh, we need a uh, Windows machine which is having Terraform installed and uh, we should have a Visual Studio code installed and uh, we should have an B center uh, and ESXA boxes. Uh, so everything is set up and uh, we, as a prerequisite, uh, we'll be creating a template, a Windows 10, 2016 template I'm using. So we'll be using a template uh, which is already configured uh, with Windows OS and uh, we should also have the credentials to connect to our B center and uh, these are the uh, mandatory objects required, like uh, requirements. We need we, we need uh, vCenter credentials to connect to vCenter using Terraform, and uh, we should have a vCenter name, template name, cluster name in the data center, uh, cluster name in the vCenter, data center name as well as uh, data store name, uh, VLAN uh, VLAN details as well as uh, a IP for uh, our virtual machine. So without wasting time, we'll go to our lab so okay so i already wrote a code uh, one is main.tf and is one is a real variable.tf so let's go to visual store code and uh, look at the variable.tf file so uh, like in our previous video we manually provisioned vm uh, so what are the requirements uh, to provision vm we already saw it so in that uh, we should have an uh, uh, and uh, we should have vCenter credentials so for that we need to declare a variable uh, we can uh, uh, like I declared a variable name uh, type is string and uh, default is set it as a VM admin at dc.com because that is the one which we want to declare it so if you don't declare default what happens is uh, whenever you apply the uh, code uh, ter when you run Terraform uh, apply it will ask you to enter the uh, like uh, username same thing with password like uh, terraform uh, variable type is string and uh, default we, we put the password but in production we won't uh, hard code the passwords so you, maybe you can use a terraform vault as well as uh, or else you can just remove this default line and uh, it will ask you to put the credentials so uh, we declare the variable for vcenter and the default is uh, vcsa01.dc.com which is our vcenter name so for VM, it should ask VM name. So that is the reason uh, we variable is VM and uh, type is string, but uh, we didn't give the default. Uh, you can give the default as any VM name, but uh, every time it will change. So we are not going to declare it. So domain name, obviously variable uh, uh, join underscore domain, uh, string type uh, is a string and default it's a domain name. So every time we don't want to enter it. So it's dc.com. Uh, same thing we need in a uh, domain admin so even that also we don't want to enter it every time so we can declare it here as default and the password yes uh, we should not declare it here but uh, as this is a lab we, we mentioned it as default so type is also string and uh, to connect uh, vCenter every time it will uh, validate the SSL certificate so we just uh, uh, make it default true so that uh, it will allow unverified SSL certificate it will allow and uh, we, will, we are good to connect to our vCenter. So we'll jump to our main.tf. Here if you see uh, provider is uh, vSphere. So uh, so if you see here 2.9.2 is the version and uh, so username uh, you can see here whatever the variable we declare. So it's dollar var that v username which is the first one we mentioned it here, uh, the username. And uh, same thing, password is uh, var.v password, which we declare it here, v password. And uh, as it is like a vCenter name uh, and uh, 
and even uh, SSL, uh, unverified SSL, we mentioned it here. Apart from that, uh, these are the variables and uh, template name is uh, template1. Uh, so it's a variable declared directly here and uh, and the resource pool is uh, self-service. Uh, we can also mention the same there also, but I mentioned it here. It's, it's your choice. So folder, uh, like a previous uh, we discussed, like uh, we, are, we have a prod folder where we want to put it here. So that is the reason I, this time I mentioned it. And also if you have a resource pool, uh, then you, you, can, you, can, you can declare the resource pool name so that uh, it, will, uh, it will provision the VM in particular resource pool. So I again mentioned it here, the variable. And uh, if you see here, build, uh, so it is uh, whenever you execute, uh, when you apply, it will connect and it will get the data source uh, like uh, this. Uh, it will check whether DC is there and it will get the DC ID. If you see here, uh, data store uh, name, it, it is, we declared it and uh, it is getting that uh, information from there. Also, if you see here, resource pool name and the network, uh, we are using Proward 102. So it, it will connect and it will, uh, it will uh, uh, pull the information and uh, at the part of cloning. So we use, uh, as I said, uh, uh, like VM name, uh, uh, like uh, we are going to, Mm, uh, like it will uh, it will ask for VM name so resource pool ID data store ID whatever the uh, data source it is collecting it will be used here so number of CPUs uh, we will be have declared one and memory in MBs so we have to give 104096 that is 4 GB firmware is EF5 uh, which is uh, uh, like uh, which is for now uh, firmware like uh, firmware details and uh, guest ID is uh, template ID which uh, we declared it, it will pull it and it will uh, use it. Scacy type whatever the template is having that will be using it and uh, network is VMX net 3 and uh, disk, uh, disk label size everything it will uh, take it from, uh, from the template whatever template is having that will uh, simply use it and uh, if you want you can add that also like if you want to mention that size you can mention it but uh, here I didn't mention it but uh, yeah we can declare it and uh, this, this is a part where cloning will happen so it will use the template ID and customization where uh, we'll be using Windows option uh, if you check the documentation it will give the same and uh, you can see that uh, it will use same uh, same variable whatever we declared for VM name that will be using it and uh, it will be joining using our domain admin and uh, password uh, and this is our uh, local admin password and it will assign network interface uh, IP with uh, slash 24 and uh, this is the DNS and uh, DNS uh, is uh, like a DNS server is dc.com and gateway is uh, this is a gateway so these all also we can uh, declare variable and output it will give the network ID once it is uh, once it is uh, executed. So this is the code. Uh, pretty simple. Uh, let's let's go to our directory and uh, let's open the PowerShell and we'll initiate Terraform uh, INIT. So it is successful. Let's apply. And it is asking for VM name. So let's give uh, VM10 and press enter. So now, if you see here, uh, like it will give what is that going to happen? Uh, it's cloning it here, and these are the values. You will be you will be seeing unknown because once it is a provision then only you will get the information and uh, like disk size is 30 whatever the template is having and uh, mac address is all unknown and this is the network id and once you say yes it will start provisioning the vm so if you see here uh, like yeah, our vm is getting provision now so it is in uh, it is uh, cloning from a uh, template one a template which is already we we created it
so we need to wait for a few minutes uh, it will be pretty fast so here whatever i declared here few things uh, we can add it in um, variables uh, like uh, a dns name uh, even uh, ipv4 subnet uh, and even uh, address also we can we can set it as a uh, uh, like we can give a variable and we can enter the address also instead of uh, declaring it here we can do that and uh, yeah from where also we can uh, we declare the variable so few things we can do it uh, as a variable instead of uh, declaring it here so sometimes uh, if you see here uh, vm options and uh, boot options uh, if you see here ef5 is recommended uh, can uh, vmware 8 and above like if if you mention it bias so what happens is the vm will be provisioned but uh, it will stuck up at uh, booting bias boot up and uh, it, it, it won't detect the disk and keep on uh, rebooting so in that case uh, the problem is uh, because of the firmware select wrong firmware which you selected it will it won't boot up with os uh, just keep it in mind and if you are doing when you run this code and if something fails in particular point uh, just change the bias and uh, change the bias uh, in the code and uh, try to execute it again then it should uh, it should be successful So it is getting rebooted. In our next video like uh, we will try to uh, we'll try to execute uh, we try to build a linux box uh, and also we will like we will we'll try to deploy multiple vms in a single instance uh, so that uh, yeah for example uh, we need to build uh, some two or three servers in a single shot uh, um, like using what uh, we can do so we can use a uh, looping uh, so if uh, so using that we can do that so yeah let let's do it in our next uh, next session so what i observed is uh, we uh, i see couple of people created a, a documentation for to provision uh, on aws uh, to provision on uh, uh, azure but uh, i don't see for uh, virtual uh, vSphere very less documentation is available that is the reason I thought of uh, making some video on this so let me know if you want code I can share that code and uh, yeah doing some changes you can use it on your lab so it's ready you can see it's added to the domain so if you see here it's completed okay let's uh, log in with our uh, domain credentials So we logged in using our uh, domain credentials and uh, let's see our uh, server manager what it shows okay uh, now you can see is uh, our group is a domain and our uh, our uh, remote desktop and remote manager enabled ip is uh, 1.15 which you declare it there and uh, yeah that is uh, oh, like whatever we expected that is done so yeah we can 
make it more granular like uh, as i said uh, uh, we can uh, we can add the disk size here itself and uh, we can add disk size or c drive uh, whatever you want like uh, though it template is having uh, 30 gb we can make it 40 gb i will try to sh make it more granular now my next video and uh, and we'll try to execute it and uh, yep that's all for this video i hope uh, this is informative as always uh, you can reach out to me if you have any questions on my gmail id uh, vstudentblog at gmail.com and please do, please do subscribe let me know for any questions thank you bye bye